Hi folks, this is Frank from Materialize, and we're going to use Materialize as a recursive SQL to try to solve Sudoku problems. Let's start by talking about how we're going to model information about Sudoku, in particular the input that we're given. Normally, uh, with the Sudoku puzzle, you're given uh, a 9x9 nine nine grid with some integers, 1 through 9, scattered throughout. And for each of those uh, presented numbers, we're going to write down the row, column, and its value. And that'll be our input. And our goal is to fill this out, basically, to, to put a value for every row column in the whole puzzle. But we're not given that information, so we've got to do some work. Now, that work is going to, uh, here, take the form of a view definition. We're going to define a view where we call it certain, and these are row column value triples that we are certain of. We would write them down in ink. Now, you might have noticed, and this has this scary with mutually recursive jargon here. And if you're worried at all, don't worry. This is as simple as following uh, looping forever. You might notice if we look at the body here, what we're going to do repeatedly is uh, pick a name, options, and certain, and bind that name to a definition. We'll say that options is equal to something, and then certain is equal to something else. And they're allowed to refer to each other and to themselves. So if we go back again, having evaluated both of them, and say, well, what's options is equal to now? It might have changed. Uh, certain is different than it was before. Options might change, then certain might change as well, options might change again, and we're essentially going to repeatedly evaluate options and certain, options certain, over and over until they converge, until they stop changing. Uh, and that's all that with major recursive is. It's, it's a big loop that repeatedly uh, updates assignments of data to these bindings. What are, the, what are the definitions we're going to use here? So we're going to start with this collection called options, and you can think of this as what you might write in pencil into your Sudoku puzzle. These are triples that might possibly be true. And they can't all be true, but uh, these are all on the table. And we're going to start with the very optimistic take that all numbers 1 through 9 could be in any row, column, value, anywhere throughout the whole puzzle. There's a lot of these. There's 729 of them. So we're going to have to whittle that down a little bit. We've also got this certain uh, view down here, which is things that we're sure about. We'd write them in ink, not pencil. And at the beginning, the only thing we're really sure about is the given input. That has to be the case. That's just how these puzzles work. But we don't really know much, much else yet. Now, if we're thinking about it, we go back around and say, let's evaluate options again. Well, OK, at this point, we actually know a bit more. right? We're certain of some things. And certainty about things in Sudoku is one of the ways to rule out options. In particular, if you've got a row column value that you're, you're sort of certain of, great. Uh, you can cross out that value from that entire row cross that out from that entire column, and you can cross out every other value from that row column location. So let's type that out. So here all I've said is for every R, C, V from certain, ignore the R, uh, and replace it with some other R2 that ranges from 1 to 9. This crosses out that, that entire row. And we'll do exactly the same thing for columns and values. Uh, crossing out you know, that, that value from the entire column and, and every value from that row column location. And you, you might have noticed that this is a bit overzealous. We actually have to add back in the things we were certain about, because we even crossed out things we were certain about. That's a mistake. They need to remain options, because uh, because they're, they're true. We're certain about them. Now, having done this, We've reduced our options a little bit. We've crossed out some stuff. That, that's great news. That might lead us to be certain about things. right? One of the ways that you reason in Sudoku is that you have, for example, a row and a column. And there's only one possible value that could be there. Uh, well, it's got to be that value. So let's, let's type that out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say max view. We'll come back to this. It doesn't have to be max, it, but it does need to be something. So if we take our options and we group them by row and column and say if there is exactly one record there, so the count is exactly equal to one, go grab that value. This doesn't have to be uh, max. It could be average. It could be sum. It could be min. It could be a lot of different things in here. But we just need to grab that, grab that value. And we can apply the same reasoning to uh, columns and also to rows. All right. So if we have a row and a value with only one column as an option. It's got to be that column. 
and similarly if we have a column and a value with only one row, then uh, well, it's got to be that row. This will update certain, which will then feed back and update options again, potentially. And they'll keep updating each other, reducing options and increasing certainty until at some point they'll stabilize, maybe with a full solution, maybe not. And the result of our, uh, our block here will be to say, well, just give us back the certain results. That's what we want to see. So we've gone and bound that definition, certain there. Let's go and see what happens. So here's a particularly easy Sudoku problem. Uh, and we're going to put all this data into given, and we'll just see how many inputs there are just to start. Okay, there's 38 of them. It's quite a lot. It's almost half the board filled out already. Uh, but let's see what our, uh, what our logic is able to figure out from this. So it came back. It actually solved the entire puzzle. 81 values that we are certain about. So every row and column pair is represented with exactly one value. Uh, amazing, we've solved, solved the problem. Now, it was a very easy problem, and the rules were incredibly simplistic. You can spend, uh, and I have, uh, spent a bunch of time adding more rules, thinking through how do you reason about these Sudoku puzzles and trying to codify that into the SQL that will help you solve these, these problems. Uh, but I hope that's been uh, well a, a, as fun as I've uh, had putting this together and playing with Sudoku with recursive SQL. Thanks.